Have you ever wondered how many fewer bugged and glitched trophies there would be if mainstream game reviews pointed out any issues that were encountered? I mean, if a Metacritic score was impacted at all by any trophy issue, you better believe a more conscious effort would be made to make sure they worked as intended. Now that's why I wanted to start this Platinum Experience review series, and in this video I want to review Biomutant, a new open world game by Experiment 101 and published by THQ Nordic. Now, before I begin, some transparency. I have not actually platinumed Biomutant yet, and I will certainly get into why that is a bit later, but the TLDR is that I'm either looking for a needle in a very large open world haystack, or something went wrong and it's impossible for me to complete without some sort of patch. My platinum experience is going to be much different than yours because when I get stuck, there's no Google search in the world that will solve my problem. Now before I dive into my trophy tale, let's talk about this beautiful open world game that looks simple from the surface but hides a very deep RPG foundation underneath. So the story is about a plague that is ruining the land sometime in the future. It's a land that has suffered greatly at the hands of the human race, and after we as the species apparently disappeared, life has taken on a more mutated form. In this new world, several different tribes exist, but they are divided. The tree of life, because of course, needs to be saved. That's where you start things off. You'll need to unite the tribes, take on deadly world leaders, and then save the tree of life, and it's incredibly fun along the way. Like, incredibly fun. Now the story of Biomutant isn't itself groundbreaking, but what makes it really work is the, the, the that you can't understand any of the characters. It's just gibberish, but it's narrated by someone with little knowledge of the human world, which makes for some entertaining descriptions of normal day items. For example, and I'm totally going to paraphrase this, but after coming up into a house described as a fixer-upper, we are told that people used to flip houses with the narrator then questioning how strong humans must have been to flip a house. There's a lot of that in this game, and it's quite cute and charming. Character creation will be a lot of fun for you, though. You get to choose a look and class along with some starting attributes, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter what you choose at all, because once you start upgrading yourself to whatever best fits you, none of this in the beginning is going to matter. You'll be earning a ton of upgrades along the way. I started with a build that was more of a two-handed sword wielding tank, and by the end I kind of describe myself as a dual wielding ninja magician. You can change your appearance at certain locations as well during the game, which is always welcomed. The loot in this game though is absolutely bloody fantastic, and if you want to dive into the wonderful crafting system, uh, feel free, you can be in there for days. It's absolutely incredible. Normally, I avoid all crafting mechanics in video games that are more complicated than the simple system that is in, say, like The Last of Us. But Biomutant is really the first time I enjoyed it, and I love finding potential new parts to equip myself with. It's a very deep system, but I'm not a big fan of the UI interface as it felt a little overwhelming and cluttered for me, but eventually I got used to it. The combat, though, is absolutely a blast. It's really fun, and I can imagine it'll be something that people are most impressed with. This can be vastly different from player to player as well because of your character builds. I initially found something that worked, and I stuck with it for a while, but once I started testing other builds, I was immediately amazed at how different it felt while still being equally effective. In the early parts of the game, you'll be a little bit more focused on your build, but don't worry, it'll all start opening up for you as you get new upgrade points which are made available in plenty throughout your playthrough. The world is big and it's very colorful. It's well crafted and it's absolutely a joy to traverse. You'll be crossing these lands with the help of many different types of mounts. I didn't even find some of my favorite mounts until after I beat the game and just explored the world. The one thing I didn't care for was the map UI. I mean, this by far is my most, uh, most frustrating aspect of the game. There's not a lot of information you can acquire from the map itself. I think it's designed to be less intimidating and easy to use, but at the cost of function. For example, you can't place a waypoint marker anywhere you want, only on named locations or fast travel points, for which there are many fast travel points, so kudos for that. This leads to some frustrating navigation when trying to get to certain areas, as you have to constantly keep checking your map to make sure you're heading the right direction. You also can't fast travel while on a mount, which I found confusing and I never remembered. So I was always constantly opening the map, 
closing the map, getting off my mount, opening the map, and then fast travel. A little, a little an, uh, annoying. Um, each er new discovered area on the map also contains a list of items you can find within that item, different types of loot. But you can only see this list while you're in the actual area. And this is massive frustration if you're looking for gadgets or any specific types of collectibles that you must collect. In most other open world games, you can open your map and hover over each location and see what you found and missed. After you complete the story and start down your trophy path, you're going to wish it marked locations for some of the creatures you need or, or glitter grass locations or even the altars. Just none of that. There's no information on the map. Now, I should probably mention performance as well. I played with backwards compatibility on the PS5 and experienced a lot of frame rate issues, especially when entering or leaving a cutscene or any time I called my mount. Combined with some crashing that I also had from time to time, it's clear why Experiment 101 disabled 4K on backwards compatible versions on the PS5. Now, this is going to be improved over time and eventually a native PS5 version will drop and I'm super excited for that. Now the story took me about 20 hours to complete and it was another 15 hours to complete most of the side quest missions. So I would estimate the platinum time might be around 30 to 40 hours. The reason I don't have the platinum yet is because I'm missing just a few collectibles. That's it. Unlike in Ubisoft open world where the map is overly cluttered with all of your collectible items, Biomutant doesn't show you anything outside of quest objectives. You're expected to talk to people to learn about new locations. I even discovered a whole collectibles related side quest 10 hours after beating the game, which by the way, there is new game plus, but I opted to reload my save prior to the final boss to finish up my trophy hunting. With very little left to find, now when I talk to an NPC, they just give me the same broken quest. Now this is the part of the story where I mentioned that I may have a bug trophy and why my platinum experience review is lacking well, an actual platinum. In my early goings, I was convinced I purchased all the necessary gun proficiency skills for the Pew Pew trophy. I spent a good 30 minutes looking at it, staring at the menu over and over again before giving up. Now the next day I logged back on to discover there was a patch deployed, and as soon as I hit the title screen, my trophy actually retroactively popped. Now I'm looking at my remaining four trophies and can't help but think that maybe I've already met the requirements. How would I know? I've scoured every inch of this world multiple times over and over, entered every single building, and while it's possible I'm still unable to locate something, it's equally possible that I was bugged. Ultimately, I won't know until thousands of other eyeballs can search the map. My only option right now is to continue to search for a needle in a haystack that may not even exist at all. I might have the platinum already, I don't even know. I also have that bug side quest that is listed three times in my journal. I've had a handful of issues like this and while it would likely never bother the average player of this game, it will drive completionists insane. The trophy that require you to capture 20 of this animal or that animal is severely lacking a tracking method as well. But overall, the trophy list is pretty solid. There's nothing requiring you to play on a harder difficulty, and once the community makes a map of all the different locations in the game, this shouldn't be that hard to platinum, as long as there aren't any bugs blocking your path. I really found this game to be absolutely amazing. For anyone planning on enjoying the story, I hope you find it as charming and fun as I did. For you platinum chasers, well, you'll probably be fine as well, because if and when you do get stuck, you can just turn to Google or YouTube. The final thing I want to say is that it's a damn shame that this wasn't available as a native PS5 app because we've been spoiled by these fast frame rates and loading speeds. But I highly recommend Biomutant, but I do wish the game helped push you towards incomplete objectives a little nicer. Or maybe I'm just really bugged and all will be fine once a patch comes. In the end, I'm going to score Biomutant a gold trophy.